The model kit in this video was provided to me by Hobbling Japan. Links to my own down below. Men, we have just received the most unbelievable mission up to date. A top secret military mech has been stolen by a kid. Shocking, I know. We don't know how he managed to pull it off or even why he did it, but it's our mission to get it back, or failing that, to destroy it. The target is the Slave Trooper 1, also known as the Madox 1, a brand spanking new anti-tank weapon that has so far proven to be invincible in simulated combat. I think it's about time that we show this puppet that real combat can be very different. The most important thing is to not allow the Madox to get close to your tank. It is most effective at close range, where it can outmaneuver its opponents with its superior agility. Something that most definitely isn't obvious from how bulky it looks, and how restricted the movement of the limbs are. Its secret lies in the thrusters on its back and the shoulder-mounted wings. Clip those and its performance will go down significantly. This will then also allow you to focus on its other weakness, the hips. A well-placed hit will tear them clean off. Also, while a machine gun might not be able to damage the armor of the Madox, we've noticed that the seal between the main hatch and the body isn't perfect and leaves a small gap in certain areas. Potentially enough for a stray bullet to get through. Remember, our top priority is securing the powered suit. What happens to the pilot is secondary. And the sooner we stop it, the better, because its weapons are absolutely nothing to sneeze at. Its standard weapon is a 35mm autocannon with a swiveling grip, allowing it to be easily held in either its left or right hand. Although typically, it will be held in its left hand, as most of its other weapons are mounted on the right side. It can be either belt fed or magazine fed. And the main weapon for that right arm is a devastating giant Gatling gun. When not in use, it is stored on the back, but thanks to its support arm, it can be quickly deployed, ready to shred whatever is in its way. The other weapons then require the arm to be switched out with one that has a claw and hard points. For suppressive fire, there's a 12.7mm machine gun with built-in laser optics. And just like the Gatling gun, it is belt fed from the back mounted ammo compartment. Although, it does require some parts to be exchanged because it requires a different feeding mechanism. And for heavier firepower, a two tube missile launcher can be mounted. But even without its weapons, it still has some tricks up its sleeve. Mounted on the wings are two smoke dischargers, which can be swiveled up and down, and these standard arms have a knuckle guard to allow the Madox to punch its way out of trouble. Did I mention to not get too close to this thing? Finally then, it has a pop-up sensor unit, and as this is just a prototype, you will notice some color discrepancies between the images we have on file and the machine you will find in the field. There's no red on these pod-like things, the various sensors aren't colored, the ammo belt is pitch black, and while the visor is clear green, the main sensor is simply clear. And in terms of markings, it simply has two water slide decals displaying its model number, 01. And that is all the information we have on it so far. So get out there and show them what our tanks are capable of. I will not accept any losses against this toy. And talking about toys, I'm sure your only remaining question is, do you want to buy this? And well, while it is expensive, 7,182 yen, it is a very nicely detailed kit that also comes with a lot of accessories and only has some hollow parts on the hands and the claws. More middle of the road then is the articulation, which is not bad for how chonky this thing is, but the weak hip joints made posing it way more frustrating than it needed to be. Another downside then is that it does have some obvious seam lines and that for that price, maybe the thrusters could have been movable instead of being parts formers. 
Also, keep in mind that it's not a particularly big model kit, as evidenced by the standard size Gym Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. It's shorter than the Gym Custom and definitely gets out bulked by the Zaku 3. But the Maydox does come with a giant Gatling gun. You win some, you lose some. And that has been all for this review of this powered suit. Again, brought to you by Hobbling Japan. Links to get your own down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.